Welcome back. I have decided to split the sewing tutorial in two parts. That's because I want to show you all the details when sewing the lace layer. In the next video I will work on the foam and the bra, but today we are focusing entirely on sewing the lace and the power bar. From the previous video, we ended up having all the pieces cut out, two layers of power bar for each cup, and only one lace piece per cup. Let's get started with only the lace section. I have them solely on my sewing table. And first thing we start with, is to sew the dart. With two fingers, pick the lace from the dart point, while with the other hand pick the lace at the bottom. You need to fold the fabric along the imaginary center line of the dart. If I flip the lace on either side, can you see that the dart markings match? Pin the dart over here, then, having the dart flatten out, pin all along. When sewing the dart, we start from the dart point. The needle will follow the markings exactly. Arrange the needle right on the very edge of the fabric fold, and slowly and carefully start sewing. Help the fabric with your hands. Stop and go back to reinforce the seam. From here, sew carefully following the markings. That's why I emphasized the markings in the previous video. Look here, how the stitch follows exactly the markings. And it should do so on both sides of the dart. Clip away the threads on the dart point, and now start flattening any puckering of the seam on the first cup. But do this very gently, not to snap the threads. Repeat for the second cup. Puckering happens when the lace is rather thin. It also depends on your sewing machine. Let's move on to the second seam. Make sure you have the end point of the seam very well marked. And let's turn the cup upside down. Pick the cup up, folding the lace and aligning the raw edges of our future seam. The entire seam here will run starting from raw edges and finishing on the fabric fold. Start pinning from the free edges until almost our marking point. This seam will go from the bottom of the cup, remember it's upside down right now, and will follow the raw edge. Towards the end, the stitch will blend in, and it will finish on the marked point. At the sewing machine, I'm going to repin the last pin, so I can slide my fabric under the foot. I'll arrange the work so that the edge of the presser foot follows exactly the edge of the seam. The distance from the needle to the edge is exactly the seam allowance width. Start sewing guided by the presser foot that follows the edge of the lace. But when the raw edges end and you reach the fold of the fabric, guide the machine to the marked point. The stitch here is going to be a slight curve. At the very end, the needle will end right on the edge of the fabric fold, very similar to a dart. Make sure to reinforce the seam, we don't want it to unravel. And let's look closely. This seam is almost like a dart. The stitch starts at the very edge, where my marking point is, but then, the stitch goes and follows the seam allowance. If you prefer, you can overlock the raw edges. Once again, you may need to flatten any puckering. Next, let's tame the dart and the seam allowances. We need to flatten them, and to do that, we're going to direct the seam allowances towards the power bar. Knowing the direction of the seam allowance, the next step is to topstitch these seams. Topstitching is the same as for any usual seam, except here we don't go over till the end. We're going to stop when almost reaching the dart point. Again make sure to reinforce the end of the seam. Then carefully clip away the threads. And look here, with matching color threads, the top stitching is almost invisible. Next, top stitch your second seam. Don't forget to direct the seam allowance towards the power bar, not the center front of the bra. And look here how the lace now arranges beautifully. The seams are flat and nice on the front, and at the back. Flatten any puckering if you've got them. It's time to add the power bars. 
Before we do so, if you haven't already, mark the notch on the power bar pieces. This way we'll know where the lace will align to the power bar. I've marked the piece on the left, and I need to mark the notch for my right cup. From here, the steps follow the pattern booklet exactly, but let me very quickly show you. First we need to add the first layer of the power bar. With the right sides together, arrange the lace scallops to the recently marked notch on the power bar. Start pinning the power bar and the lace piece. Then stitch using a straight stitch. After that, you're going to add the second power bar on top of the other side of the lace. Align the second power bar piece, following the one you have already sewn. The easiest way is to align the strap end and then at the bottom of the cup. To help stay in place, use pins. And then, move on to your sewing machine to stitch everything together. I'm using the elastic stitch here, because my power bars are rather stretchy. Once done, unfold the power bars hiding the seam inside. To flatten this seam line, we're going to top stitch it. Again, I'm using the elastic stitch, but if your power bar fabric does not stretch, you can use the straight stitch. And lastly, to flatten the power bars, I'm going to pin those two layers together along the wire line and along the armhole, so I can quickly machine baste them. This will help me when sewing the lace layer to the foam cup and the band. And we're done with the lace layer of the cup. In the next video we're moving on to sewing the foam cup and adding the lace layer to it. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you liked this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section. Have a great time and see you in the last part of the tutorial.